Wanted by authorities in the Netherlands, Said Radzuki is not just any criminal, he is the right-hand man of one of the most notorious crime lords, Ridwan Taghi. While you might have heard about Ridwan Taghi, Razukin had always been an enigmatic figure with little to no information. This Dutch Moroccan man's story is complex, weaving through the criminal underworld with an air of mystique that has captivated law enforcement and the public alike. Join us as we answer the question, who is Saeed Razuki, Tagi's right-hand man? But before that, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us. Envision a cunning architect of crime, a maestro who has deftly eluded the clutches of law enforcement for years. Surrounding himself with a cadre of devoted confidants, individuals prepared to go to great lengths to safeguard their elusive leader. Such is the enigmatic persona of Said Razuki. Syed Razuki, born on the 1st of June 1972 in Benetozan, Morocco, embarked on a tumultuous journey that would lead him to the heart of the criminal underworld in the Netherlands. Growing up in a large family, Razuki, alongside his older and younger siblings, transitioned to the Netherlands during his formative years, settling in the Utrecht area. The year 1994 marked a turning point when tragedy struck, and his mother's passing shook the young Razuki. The law enforcement radar first caught wind of the Razuki family due to their association with hash selling. Syed, as a teenager, swiftly became entangled in petty crimes, joining a Utrecht and newigan based street gang known as the Bad Boys. Together, they engaged in activities ranging from breaking into homes and stores to theft, all in pursuit of monetary gain. Interestingly, it was during this period that Razuki found himself in the same gang as another infamous figure, Ridoan Taggy. With time, Razuki and Taggy ascended the criminal hierarchy, transitioning from small-scale crimes to the high-stakes world of cocaine smuggling. Within their organization, Razuki emerged as Taggy's right-hand man, assuming the role of a strategic and wise figure. While Taggy operated impulsively, Razuki meticulously planned their criminal endeavors. His responsibilities included overseeing the distribution of shipments, ensuring the smooth flow of operations, and handling crucial assignments. Razuki played a pivotal role in the delegation of tasks. Messages meant for Tagi often passed through him, making him the conduit between the crime lord and the outside world. Notably, Razuki entrusted critical assignments to individuals like Nabil B, who played a crucial role in executing hits. From observation and photography to organizing getaway vehicles and weapons, Nabil B became the executor of Tagi and Razuki's dark agenda, completing the package for a successful operation, excluding the actual hitters themselves. In 2016, the underworld of Utrecht found itself in the grip of turmoil as Said Razuki and Ridwan Tagi, once inseparable allies, became sworn enemies. The catalyst for this discord lay in Ibrahim Abuzubuzu, who had provided damning police statements about their criminal organization. In a strategic move, Razuki targeted Buzu, believing that retaliation was imminent. One evening, two men dressed in black infiltrated the Platinum Lounge, the headquarters of Buzu's group. Razuki, fearing abduction or worse, orchestrated a revenge plot. Lay low and seeking retribution, Razuki and Tagi chose to eliminate someone from Buzu's camp, Ranko Shetic. Nabil, entrusted with the task, received a message from Razuki through Tagi, instructing him to take immediate action. On the 21st and 22nd of June, Nabil, subsequently, removed Ranko from the equation. Razuki and Tagi reveled in the success of the hit. Little did they know that the police were closing in, with Ibrahim Buzu revealing Ridwan Tagi's name for the first time. At this point, Said Razuki still lingered in the shadows, unknown to law enforcement. The tides turned when a planned hit on Khalid Himo H went awry, resulting in the unintended death of Hakim Changashi on January 12, 2017. Frustration and anger consumed Razuki and Tagi as Nabil, realizing his inadvertent role in the tragedy, saw the burning car on the news, a car he had prepared for Himo H's hit, not Changashi's. In an attempt to cover their tracks, Razuki instructed Nabil to inform the Changashi family that another group had ordered the hit. As the truth unraveled, tensions escalated within the criminal network. Tahi, furious at Nabil's revelation, sought to eliminate him, but Razuki intervened, preserving the bond he shared with Nabil. However, the decision to spare Nabil would later prove to be a questionable one, as Nabil strategically had himself arrested and ultimately turned into a crown witness. 
Providing extensive statements to the police, Nabil detailed his involvement in numerous criminal activities orchestrated by Razuki and Tagi, shedding light on the dark underbelly of their operations. Said Razuki sensed the tightening grip of law enforcement and knew it was time to vanish from the Netherlands, thrusting himself into a life on the run. Despite speculation about his whereabouts, Razuki continued his criminal operations, orchestrating the smuggling of large cocaine shipments alongside his erstwhile ally, Ridwan Tagi. Dutch authorities, aware of Razuki's strong bond with his daughter, hoped that this familial connection would be his Achilles heel. They kept a vigilant eye on her, anticipating that Razuki might make a mistake by attempting to contact or visit her. However, to their dismay, Razuki proved to be elusive, avoiding any such misstep. Meanwhile, Dutch police collaborated with Colombian undercover agents in a high-stakes operation aimed at apprehending Razuki. Equipped with a file featuring Razuki's headshot, the Dutch police shared critical information about the elusive criminal's potential hideout in Medellin. An anonymous tip had suggested that Razuki sought refuge in the South American city, enjoying the protection of a powerful cartel. The Colombian undercover agents, armed with this information, embarked on an exhaustive investigation. Their first move involved flying an airplane equipped with advanced listening devices over affluent neighborhoods in Medellin, hoping to uncover connections to Razuki. Unfortunately, this initial effort yielded no results as Razuki's cautious communication methods eluded detection. Undeterred, the agents shifted their focus to Razuki's religious inclinations. Aware of his frequent visits to mosques, they honed in on the three mosques in Medellin, hoping to observe any signs of his presence. After weeks of surveillance and no sightings, the agents were on the verge of abandoning their mission. However, a breakthrough occurred when they spotted an older man, incognito with a cap, hoodie, and glasses, exiting a taxi near a mosque. The ensuing cat and mouse chase through the bustling streets of Medellin eventually led them to a high-rise building in Sabanita, boasting over 300 apartments and stringent security measures. Undeterred by the challenges posed by the complex, the agents decided to rent two apartments with a vantage point overlooking Razuki's potential hideout. The stage was set for a high-stakes operation that would bring them one step closer to the elusive Said Razuki, the most wanted man, and his partner in crime, Ridwan Tagi. The man's routine was meticulous, leaving his apartment only on Fridays to attend the mosque, a detail not lost on the Colombian undercover agents. Noticing his frequent orders of halal food further fueled their suspicion that this man might indeed be Said Razuki. In close collaboration with Dutch authorities involving nearly 200 individuals working on the case, the agents gathered a wealth of evidence painting a compelling picture of their person of interest. After 11 months of relentless effort, a breakthrough finally emerged. A high-quality picture of the man sporting a long gray beard, confirmed their suspicions. It was Saeed Razuki. With this crucial identification, the agents installed listening devices near his window, eavesdropping on conversations that hinted at a potential plan to leave the country. Alarm bells rang, signaling the need for swift action. Colombia's elite anti-narcotics force, the Commandos Junglas, was enlisted for the operation. On the 7th of February, 2020, the operation was a go. The Junglas, renowned for their expertise, entered the high-rise complex, swiftly advancing toward Razuki's doorstep. The decisive moment unfolded as they forcefully breached the door, taking only a few extra seconds that allowed Razuki to make a desperate decision, jumping out of his 15-meter high window. The daring leap left Razuki injured, but determined to evade capture. Despite attempting to stumble away, his injuries proved too severe, leading to his eventual arrest. As he was taken into custody, Razuki, known for his criminal exploits, was described as whining and hiding his face. The capture of Syed Razuki marked the culmination of an extensive and collaborative international effort to bring one of the most wanted men to justice. The arrest of Syed Razuki, once alleged to be making millions, left an undercover agent reflecting on the irony of his subsequent life, a stark departure from expectations. Living in a small apartment without real freedom, the reality of his detainment in Colombia contrasted sharply with the image of a high-profile criminal mastermind. Extradited to the Netherlands in December 2021, after over a year in Colombian custody, Razuki became a key figure in the extensive Marengo trial. Prosecutors portrayed him as completely relentless, 
demanding a life sentence for his alleged involvement in multiple hits, including those on Martin Koch, numerous attempted hits, and plans for additional criminal activities. In February 2023, Radzuki vehemently denied all accusations during the trial. Described as absolute nonsense, he refuted claims of ordering hits or being associated with criminal organizations, particularly distancing himself from Ridwan Taghi. Speaking on the last day of court in July 2023, Radzuki passionately asserted his innocence, criticizing Nabil B, the crown witness, as a liar and boaster. He expressed frustration with the perceived lack of fairness in the trial, asserting that prosecutors immediately believed Nabil B's testimony. As of now, the outlook for Said Razuki appears grim, with the trial's complexities and uncertainties adding to the challenges he faces in the pursuit of justice.